Okay, we're Jerry and Carol Lacey from Midland, Michigan. We've owned this 1965 Crown Imperial since about 1986, but 16, 17, 18 years. Found it down in Dallas, Texas. We were sitting there, no tires on, all burned up by the sun. And I put tires on it and put a canvas over the top and uh, lashed it down with wire and drove it back to Michigan. Car runs good, better than it was when it was new. Hi there, this is Wayne and Susan Simonson. We're from Ray, Michigan, which is just outside of Romeo. This is a 55 Imperial limousine. The second to the last year, the Chrysler built production limousines. It's a, a, one of 127 that was built that year. It's got a 149 inch wheelbase, 331 Hemi with a four barrel on it. Uh, sticker price at the time was $7,737. And uh, it, it's a heck of a driving car. The only thing back then, I think people were a little smaller. I'm about six, seven. and. Uh, it's hard for me to get in the front seat. It's, it's made for a small Englishman, I think. Hi, my name is Darren Yazza John. This is my wife, Joyce. Uh, we're here today uh, in Ypsilanti to uh, show our uh, 1957 Crown Imperial, or Imperial Crown Sedan is the correct name. And uh, the color is uh, Sunset Rose. And the unique uh, thing about this car, it's uh, all original. It's only got 11,000 miles on it right now. And uh, it's got the original paint, original chrome upholstery, and even the original tires. Uh, when we found the car uh, nine years ago in Allen Park, it only had 9,100 miles. And we managed to uh, put 2,000 miles on it over the uh, past nine years. Uh, even the, uh, the car does not have air conditioning. But it's got just about every other option, including power windows, power seats, and everything works fine. Car runs perfectly, just as you would expect an 11,000 mile car, too. Hi, I'm Dave Truex from Canton, Michigan. This is a 1959 Edsel Corsair four door sedan with 22,000 actual miles. It's a 361 V8 single exhaust automatic transmission, three speed automatic transmission. It's had a lot of restoration done. The interior is original. Um, and as far as drivability, it runs great, it's got a lot of power. Uh, and one little unique thing about this particular car, it's the only Ford product in 1959 that the hood opens from the rear instead of from the front. I'm Jeff White, I'm from Wyandotte, Michigan, and uh, this is a 1959 Edsel Villager. It's a nine-passenger wagon, a little bit more rare than a six-passenger, and uh, I've had the car for uh, 16 years. Got it out of Louisiana. It's uh, pretty straight, rust-free, uh, except for a few little blemishes here and there. Uh, I've mostly uh, had uh, mechanical work done on it and uh, just uh, fluffed it up a bit. But it's a good driving car. I just really enjoy it, and uh, I get a lot of use out of it in the nice months. Yeah. Uh, my name is Harry Robertson, and my wife, Lorene, and we are from Richmond, British Columbia, which is near Vancouver. The make is a 1957 Monarch turnpike cruiser that originated in Vancouver at Brown Brothers Motors. It uh, was originally sold at Brown Brothers. It uh, went to Woodstock, Ontario by the other brother. There was, there was two brothers involved and it, there it sat 21 years and then Dave uh, Truix who is here with Edsel, he, he was going to restore it and to tore it totally apart and then he uh, lost interest or for whatever reason he didn't finish it. I heard about it through Bill Orr, who works at Ford, and uh, the deal was made there. I got some pictures back, and I wanted it immediately because it's a Canadian turnpike cruiser. Once I saw the pictures, uh, boom, I sent him enough money to hold it, and my friend and I, we took 11 days to come down, pick the car up in pieces, took it back to Richmond, where I live, and then two years it took me to bring it to where it is now from pieces. This went on the drawing board at Ford, when the Russians sent a Sputnik to the moon. It is built under the theme of a spaceship. Uh, my name is Joe Romanowski. I'm from Windsor, Ontario. Uh, this is a 1960 Monarch Lucerne to their hardtop. Uh, it was purchased new by my dad in April of 1960 from Webster's Motors in Windsor. Um, my dad had it until 64. He uh, gave the car to his father and bought himself a new Falcon, and my grandfather had it until he passed away in 1980. 
Uh, the car sat around and nobody wanted to purchase it and my grandmother gave me the car in 1988. She's got 88,000 miles. It's all original except for the paint, the carpet and the wind lace. It also has the uh, 383 cubic inch motor, uh, 280 horsepower. We're Joe and Sue Kelly. We're from Whispering Pines, North Carolina. We have an old car museum down there in Pine Bluff, and these are two of our favorite cars. This car is a 1934 Packard 1107 convertible. It was originally sold to Sonia Henney, the Olympic star and, and movie star. And uh, the car is a beautiful running car, has uh, the silver with the red belt line and red leather interior. It's just a great car. And we were just awarded a, uh, the Detroit News uh, Best of Show uh, plaque, and we're thrilled about that. And the car to our left behind us is one we just got. It's, a, again, a 1934, and it's a V12 cylinder. Uh, the car came from Vancouver, British Columbia, from a collector there, and the car is in Im immaculate condition. And it's kind of an interesting car because it's of the fact that it's a V12, and there are very few of those. Yeah, this is our third car. It's a 1958 Chrysler Imperial Crown Southampton, and uh, it's got only 7,400 miles on it. It's original in every respect, and it runs just perfect. Uh, while I'm here, I'd like to mention our museum, which is in uh, Pine Bluff, North Carolina. And the website is uh, Kelly Classic Autos at Carolina.net. So if you can look there and look at our cars, many of them are for sale. And uh, if you're in that area, we'd love to have you stop in and visit with us. My name is William Leach. I'm from Wall Lake, Michigan. This car is from down south. The body and everything was finished when I got it. I rebuilt the engine and transmission. It is a six cylinder, three speed on the tree, with no power. It has vacuum wipers. It's a completely standard Ranger four door. It's probably one of the cheapest models that they had at the time. Uh, this car was really a, a nice car. It had a lot of stories about why it didn't sell. But 1958 was a big recession. So it had a hard time. Ford Motor Company was trying to put this car in the similar position of the Pontiac General Motors car. Uh, they had a Chevrolet Pontiac Olds. Ford Motor Company wanted a Ford Edsel Mercury. To my sad belief, the Edsel disappeared because of the recession. Hi, I'm Bill Erickson from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, my vehicle is a 1925 Buffalo Larrabee fire truck. Triple combination with a water pump, chemical truck, and a hose truck. The restoration took about 13 years. It's powered by a Continental straight six cylinder engine. I'm Rich Weinkoff, and this is Debbie, and this is a 1970 Kaiser Jeep M35A2 cargo truck. I bought this truck from a uh, fellow in New Jersey who buys them from the BRMO and then he builds them up and makes them road ready and uh, brought it back over about three days and it was a very long grueling trip and uh, it's in great shape so I didn't have to do that much to it. Cosmetically um, this is called a four color camouflage pattern and this is a very prescribed pattern. Uh, each one of these patterns that you see on the truck, each piece of color is uh, prescribed in a manual and can only vary in position around the truck by about one inch before it becomes uh, non-standard. Of course, as it gets in the uh, military and people get asked to paint these things more for punishment than for uh, uh, a job, then the uh, patterns will vary. And uh, this truck has a 478 cubic inch straight six continental diesel in it, about 130 horsepower, does about 52 miles an hour uh, top speed, and it's extremely loud. So you have to wear hearing protection with it. Okay, my name is John Wolford. Uh, I'm from Highland, Michigan. This is a 1961 Corvair Ramside pickup. Uh, special of this truck is uh, the ramp that folds down, which allows you to load with a, a two wheel. Uh, the truck has an 80 horsepower engine and uh, they made this truck for four years, from 61 to 60, 
four. Uh, the engine got a little bigger eventually, about a 110. But, uh, this has enough to get you by. They also made this truck without the ramp, and it was called a load side. Uh, they made about 2,400 of those trucks. And this truck, in a four-year run, they had uh, around 17,000, a little over 17,000 of them. Hi, my name is Chuck Brooklyn. This is Bill Backa. We own this 61 Corvair station wagon. It's a Lakewood 500. We've had it for two years, and uh, we've restored it. What all did you have to do when you found it? What kind of shape was it in? Oh, it was in good shape. We we painted everything, and we're going to redo the interior and stuff like that. Do you have, have with the engine in the back there? Yeah, the engine's in the rear. It's a 1966 engine. Okay, my name is Gerald Flynn. I'm from Dexter, Michigan, and I, my car is a 61 Monza uh, two-door coupe. Uh, we, we found it in uh, uh, Virginia at the National Corvair Convention. It originally was built in Kansas City, Missouri, and it's been a Colorado car most of its life up until the time I found it. Uh, the car was rust-free. The only thing that I did to it was take out the door dents, the par parking lot dents, and things like that, and put a paint job on it. Uh, the drivetrain has not been touched. It's still the original drivetrain with 85 or 82 horsepower motors. Hi, my name is Ben Merkel. I'm from Middlefield, Ohio. And uh, I drove up today in this uh, 1982 Checker cab which was sold new to uh, the Yellow Cab Company of Norfolk, Virginia, who used it up until about 1988, at which point I bought it for uh, $250. Uh, it was one of many for sale, and uh, it's only recently put it put on the street, but it's basically the original condition with the paint washes and the bondo, and, and uh, it's basically been left as intact as possible. But the car... Uh, it's basically probably got a half million miles on it. It's powered by a Chevrolet V6, a 229 Chevrolet V6. And it's got uh, some Chevrolet running here. The brakes are Chevrolet. But the, uh, the basic suspension dates back to the 1956 Ford. So it's quite a Frankenstein of a car. Uh, Checker built about 1,800 of these in 82. Hello, uh, my name's Peter Talanka, and I'm from uh, Newton Falls, Ohio. And uh, the year of the automobile is a 1981 Checker A11. And it is a taxi from the city of Norfolk, the state of Virginia. And it is original in every way, down to a meter in the dash. And uh, I've owned the automobile for about 15 years. Uh, I, I purchased it from a private uh, individual. And uh, I take my family around in it and have quite a good time with it. Uh, I've, I do have problems in Cleveland because their cabs are green and white too. And when you go to the airport, it's kind of funny because people look at the color and the taxi, you know, they'll, they'll hate taxi. Even sometimes you'll go uh, driving down Cleveland, they'll just step out right between cars and kind of look and they get that look of, and then now what? Yeah, and you drive by, so it's, uh, it's quite an amazing vehicle. Hi, I'm Byron Babish from Bloomfield Hills, Michigan. And this is my 82 Checker A12 Marathon. I uh, bought it new from the factory and uh, picked it up, took the train there from Detroit to Battle to Kalamazoo and uh, Checker picked me up at the train station and drove me to the factory and took delivery of the car and drove it home. Uh, it never was a cab, it was the uh, little more luxury version that uh, was for private individuals. And uh, I've since added a taxi meter and jump seats uh, just to uh, appease the kids. Uh, it's original paint, uh, have a new engine in it, had a Chevy V6. I put a Chevy V8 in it a couple years ago. And uh, it's just been uh, my pride and joy for 21 years now. Okay, my name is Joe Fay, and this is a 1957 Checker Model A8 Drivermatic Special. It's the only Checker Drivermatic Special that exists in the world. The car came from Oakland, California. It was part of the Yellow Cab fleet owned by the Rothschild family. And I've had it for five years, and we restored it as a Chicago Checker. 
The si significant difference with this and the other checkers is the front end. This has single headlamps. If you notice, the headlight rims are actually from a Willys. Uh, the hood ornament dates back to 1947. They used that from the 47 to 59 period. Uh, it also has a different grill with uh, parking lights uh, and an air dam in the front above the bumper. Uh, generally speaking, it's your classic checker, but it's a little different than the others. I'm Jeff Lismo from Royal Oak, Michigan. And this is my 1949 Hudson Commodore 6. Uh, I'll tell you the interesting story about this car is that I found it on eBay. And uh, I saw it on the picture of it, and, and really it was love at first sight for me. I saw this car and and uh, knew that I had to have it, and sure enough, destiny was such that uh, I ended up getting it. It's, it's, it's restored. It's called Jet Blue. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's an original color. Um, straight six, three on the tree. And it's, uh, it's a real pleasure. Hey, Jim. My name is Chuck Cirilla. I'm from Pleasant Ridge, Michigan. This is a 1950 Studebaker Land Cruiser, which was uh, considered top of the line. I've had the car for seven years. It's from California. Uh, it's been repainted and restored. Um, it's a rust-free car. There's uh, 25 in existence of this model which is a land cruiser, kind of a rare bird. You don't see too many of these. Hello, my name is Mark Cush. I'm from Monroe, Michigan. And this is a 1958 Studebaker President two-door hardtop, one of 1,192 made. It has a 120-inch wheelbase, a 289 four-barrel dual exhaust engine. It's got 14-inch tires and rims. And this is rare on the top of the line model, but this was ordered in December of 57 without power steering, power brakes, or anything. My name is David Holtz. I'm from Brighton, Michigan. This is a 1959 Studebaker six cylinder. We've had it for about five years, and it came from a little town in Bedford, Iowa. I bought it from a 90-year-old gentleman who had it for 17 years. He bought it from his wife's aunt when she could no longer drive and then sold it to us. We call it Bedford after the town where it came from. We, we do enjoy it. It's a kind of an interesting little car. It is the first compact car made in the U.S. I'm Ken McCosh from Hillsdale, Michigan. This is a 47 Studebaker called an M5. It's a half-ton pickup. Fully restored to as authentic as I could make it. Uh, I've owned the truck for 10 years, We've spent the last five years restoring it, finished it about a year ago, and I've been real happy with the truck. Okay, this is my car also. It's a 50 Champion, Flathead 6. It's a Western car that, just like my truck was, that come out of the West, and it's a lot, uh, a lot better working on these where you don't have the rust to fight uh, these, these both these vehicles are not rust free but close to it so they're it makes it a lot handier and a lot easier to restore yeah this is i'm jerry evans this is a 55 studebaker pickup it's a 259 v8 with overdrive and it's an easy cruising truck that runs about 55 to 60 mile an hour uh, it's well done it was bought in california about four years ago and it's been repainted and refinished new wheels and so on uh, it's an excellent driver, easy to drive, very smooth truck. It's uh, this one's a 259 B8, the original this was a 232, is a and, and this is a very is easy, smooth running truck. And the engines have plenty of power for anything you want to do with it. And they put these engines even in the large truck, like semi tractors. So it was a, it was a well built truck. Uh, Malcolm and Kathy Reisner, this is a 1960 Lark two door hard top. Production is 2,829 cars. We bought it in Arizona and drove it home. We flew out there and drove it. It's a V8 automatic. The second year of this body style. Uh, this helped save Studebaker for a short span of time. My name's William Volts and this is my wife Sue. And this is a 1963 Studebaker Wagon Air Station Wagon with a sliding roof. It has a crank down rear window. You can't get them with the power assist. And it's got a sliding roof here. Oh, well, this is the son of a fellow in the front, but uh, he's driving this. Um, it's a 
nice car. Go ahead and pull on the head. Uh, my name is Mike Pulaski. I'm from Livonia, the Michigan. Asked me what next year's date is. And uh, specific date. I've been coming always, to the show for about always, five always years. The first Sunday and Sunday this is my no 52 is, Studebaker Deluxe Sunday Champion. And it's a pretty unique car because it's unrestored. It has 64,000 miles. It had about 59,000 when I bought it in 1988. And it's a deluxe champion. So in the champion series, it falls right in the middle grade. And it's got a 170 cubic inch six cylinder and a three speed overdrive transmission. Hi, I'm Tom Wilson. In 1967, I discovered this Davis car. Uh, actually, that's wrong. 1965, I discovered this Davis car uh, in a dump area in Bedford Township. It didn't look like this. It was pretty battered up and it was faded out to gray and it had paint dripping down the side of it and the upholstery was all torn up. The Davis was built in Van Nuys, California, and this car bears the serial number six. And since then, I started a Davis Club, and now I run a Davis Registry. And uh, worldwide, we've found one Davis destroyed and 14 others in existence, two of which are a military model. Over here, the green car, this is car number 13. And I bought it in Colorado in 1989, and it, it was quite complete. There was one trim piece missing, which we had to uh, substitute, but uh, just about everything is original. This car is the original engine. It's a Continental engine, probably built in Muskegon, Michigan, and uh, it's in good shape. It was overhauled by the previous owner, a fellow in Colorado that I bought it from. They're a fun car to drive, and uh, many of the old cars, people look at them and say, hey, there's an old car. They see a Davis coming by and they say, what? Uh, so people ask a lot of questions, and uh, it's, it's a fun thing to own one and drive it around and take it to shows. And as far as we know, there are only 14 of them in the world in existence. We're still looking, and if you read the back of my shirt, we have a $200 reward out for anybody who can find a Davis that we haven't registered. Well, I'm Doug Markham, and uh, my wife and I, Karen, come from Livonia, Michigan. This is a 1956 Packard 400, which was the competitor to the Cadillac Coupe de Ville in 1956. And being a 56, it's the last year for the uh, large Packard as we knew it. This is the one that has the torsion level suspension system and uh, the Packard built V8 and the twin ultramatic drive. Uh, for Karen and I, it's our one and only collector car. And I've always wanted to own a Packard all my life. And I was 16 years old when these things were brand new. And this opportunity came along, so we picked it up. And I say it's a large white and red thing that I keep pouring green stuff into, but I guess that's the nature of the hobby and all. My name is Tom Bloomer. I'm from Ann Arbor, Michigan. Uh, I have a 1956 Studebaker half ton. Uh, what, what originally was a pickup truck, but uh, a previous owner uh, took off the pickup box, which was probably rusted out, and, and uh, put a stake body on it. Uh, it's a working farm truck. It's used every day on a farm, and, uh, but I also try to keep it in nice enough shape that I can come to uh, shows like this. Here we are with Jack Miller after the 2003 Ypsi show. What do you think about it? Uh, a great success, 311 cars on the field, uh, uh, the best variety ever, um, the weather cooperated, uh, and we had a record number of people uh, um, came through the uh, spectator gates, uh, the uh, uh, people uh, set up in the big tent, uh, uh, some of the authors and, and uh, uh, automo Automobile National Heritage uh, Area, Automotive Hall of Fame all reported that they talked to lots and lots of people. Uh, the Walter P. Chrysler Museum uh, uh, was very happy with their display and, and uh, uh, they did quite well with their gift shop sales. Thank you. Yeah, this is just, uh, you don't see more variety than this show and just the quality of the cars and just everything is just fantastic. That, just that's it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The, uh, a, a great lineup.
Yeah, I always see I always see something I've never even seen before, and uh, some things I've heard of before but not seen before, and it's just uh, you just never get bored. That's correct. <laughs> Thank you so much for inviting us out again this year. Sure.